in the last stream. We were working on setting up our first extreme reactor, which is currently capable of producing well over 1,000 red stone flux per tick, but power isn't really the reason why we set it up. We set it up to get the cyanide ingots, which we then used to get liquid cyanide, which we're using over here in the production line for our netherite scrap, which has been running a little bit between streams, and we now have 86 of these in total. And I believe once we get to 250 of these, we should be able to feed them to one of our 10, 10, 10 chickens over here. I think it's netherite scrap they need and not netherite ingots. It totally is. And so once we fed 250 to this chicken, we will get an ancient chicken, which will then allow us to use that chicken to generate more netherite. Now, between streams, I've gone ahead and kind of duplicated the system we had previously a little bit. We've got two more strainers here. The first one has the cyanite, again, above it. This one we can put sand into, and putting sand into this strainer gets us soul sand. Then that soul sand is pumped over into this strainer right here, and if we put eroding water into the top of this strainer, like so, that is going to begin transforming that soul sand into wither skeleton skulls. And between streams, I have gone ahead and made three more of the reinforced everything upgrades. These are the uh, tier three everything upgrades. So almost the uh, the best. The only thing stopping us from actually getting the best is some netherite, which we're very close to being able to get. But that does mean that now we are not really using that much durability on our mesh. Both of these do have emerald meshes, and so they are getting the uh, highest chances possible. You'll see right here, there's a 70% chance to get soul sand with an emerald mesh versus 20% on a tier one mesh, so definitely worth the upgrade there. And the same is true over here. We have a 60% chance of getting the uh, Wither Skeleton Skull with a tier six mesh. And you'll see already we've got a ton of Wither Skeleton Skulls. I was thinking about generating sand. Unfortunately, you can't make sand with the resource generator. That would have been too easy. You can generate sand using a sand chicken, which we could look at doing. Like we could take 250 sand, feed it to one of our 10, 10, 10 chickens, and then plop him down in his own nest to start generating sand passively. And then we could look at exporting the sand over here in the same way we're exporting the stone for the netherite. But I don't think we really need to. I've only put a stack of sand in here and we're already at like over half a stack of wither skeleton skulls. And so I think what we can probably do instead is maybe just grab a hopper and take some of the pre-existing like 3000 sand that we already have drop that into the hopper and just let it slowly but surely generate a few stacks of wither skeleton skulls and then we can come over and take those as and when we need them of course the whole point of the wither skeleton skulls here is going to be to spawn withers now we do need to uh, actually get some soul sand in our inventory to complete the quest line over here and then the wither skeleton skull gets completed after the fact and so now that we have both soul sand and wither skeleton skulls we can actually look at beginning to work towards getting a nether star. Now, thankfully, Ben has added a recipe here that lets us duplicate nether stars once we have them so that we can never fight the wither again. But to get the first nether star, we do have to fight a wither. Now, I am going to sleep because since we expanded our refined storage system in the last episode, adding that new external storage and new exporter over here, our system is now using a fair bit more power, and you'll see right now that we're actually losing power because the solar panel doesn't start generating power until about midday. And so there are two things I want to do today. I want to get the Wither Fort. To do that, I'm going to invest in the minigun right here from Pneumaticraft. I'm going to look to upgrade this to, uh, to kind of shoot at the Wither from afar because our pneumatic armor, whilst okay, is not fantastic. Even if we do add some armor upgrades to it, I still think we're going to want to keep our distance from the wither and try not to get the withering effect. The other thing that I would like to work on today is uh, trying to hook up our reactor over here down to our system. Now, to do that, we have a few options. We could run a energy pipe all the way down and around over to here. That would work, but I think I would much rather invest in some wireless power transfer because that wireless power transfer is going to allow us to hook up other items in the future without having to run energy cables over long distances. And looking just a little bit further ahead here in the uh, Ender Watt quest line, we do have to start using the quantum compressor and the quantum compressor does require 5,000 redstone flux per tick. So we're going to have to both 
upgrade the reactor, potentially, with more fuel and potentially some coolant. Maybe make it bigger, although I'm not quite sure if we do need to make it bigger, especially if we can get a nice buffer of power. But um, we are going to have to get those quantum compressors running and being able to get power to those wirelessly would be ideal. So to do that, we can use integrated dynamics. To get our wireless power up and running, I think we need to get an energy importer, an energy exporter. We need to get the omnidirectional connectors. These are what are going to allow us to utilize uh, integrated dynamics wirelessly. And then we need a couple of variable cards as well. Now, most of this is not too difficult. Integrated dynamics is the mod that adds the manual chunks and the manual samplings and the manual wood. And so a lot of this is just manual chunks and pistons. That's easy enough. The only tricky bit is that the omnidirectional connector requires a logic director. And that logic director requires these crystallized chorus chunks, which are made from chorus fruit. And if we go back in the quest book up to silicon, yes, there is a quest right here for popped chorus fruit. We can make this by crafting fluix dust around an apple. And so as soon as our power comes back online, which I think will happen very shortly, we should be able to look at uh, getting some chorus fruit, and then we should be able to process that into these crystallized mineral chunks inside of the mechanical squeezer. And in turn, that should give us basically everything that we need for the omnidirectional connector. There we go, perfect. Do we have any Fluix crystals? We do not. Do we have any charged Certus Quartz? We do not. We have just a little bit of regular Certus Quartz, which is uh, is not ideal. We could definitely do with looking at getting a Certus Quartz chicken. I'm also fairly certain that if we wanted to, we could also look at getting a charged Certus Quartz chicken as well to kind of cut out the middleman. For now, let's go ahead and get uh, quite a few Certus Quartz and let's go drop a good chunk of them into our charging chest. You know what, I'll throw them all in there and we'll slowly start acquiring those. We can then, of course, combine those with redstone and nether quartz in a pool of water, and that is gonna get us our fluix crystals. I'm not quite sure how many of these we're going to need. It's four fluix dust per chorus fruit, and that's a one-to-one -one ratio there. And then one chorus fruit gets us guaranteed two chorus chunks, and then a 50-50 chance to get two more. So maybe two or three per chorus fruit and then we need two of these omnidirectional connectors which means two logic directors which means just six of these chunks so we probably only need two chorus fruit maybe three to play it safe and eight fluix dust later we can go ahead and craft up two popped chorus fruit and if we run both of those through our mechanical squeezer not only do we complete a chapter but we also get seven chunks which thankfully is enough for us to get this logic director. The logic director then is used for the omnidirectional connector. For that, we need some logic cable, which is also easy enough. Thankfully, we do have thousands of crystallized mineral chunks available over in this chest. We'll bring those back over here, craft up a little bit of logic cable. We then need a monodirectional connector. We need two of these. Uh, these require these input and output variable transformers. These require the variable cards. These are easy enough. I'll make a few of those because they are kind of the bedrock of integrated dynamics. There's four outputs and four inputs as soon as we get a sticky piston, easy enough. And then boom, that should be everything we need for two monodirectional connectors. And that should be everything for two omnidirectional connectors. And so now it's just a case of getting the energy importer, which requires an energy interface, which does require an energy battery, which is thankfully very cheap to make. That's gonna get us four energy interfaces. Fantastic. We'll then make one energy importer and one energy exporter and then from there i think we're kind of good to go we are probably almost certainly going to need some cables here but i believe now what we should be able to do is over on the reactor we place down the energy importer and we connect the cable to it once you've connected the cable to it you can open this up and then you want to put a variable card into the importer into that top slot that says import energy like this this is basically just telling the importer what to do. If you wanted to specify how much energy you were gonna pull in, you could put it in this slot here, but you would have to um, change the variable card using a logic programmer to a integer and then specify the amount that you want to pull in. For us, we don't care. We want to import all of the energy. And so we're just gonna put it into the import energy section. And then we can place down our omnidirectional connector like so. And you'll notice that these have a group number. The group number is important because the group number tells this omnidirectional connector which other omnidirectional connectors to connect to. 
And so because these were both crafted together, they're both in group 57, if you wanted to make more going forward, you would have to craft the pre-existing connector in the same recipe. So this is the normal recipe. You'll see you can craft it like this instead with one of the old connectors in there. That will get you three instead of two because you get the one that you put in back and it will give them all the same group number as well. And so we will have to pick one of these up if we want to attach more in the future. But for now, we can go ahead and take this omnidirectional connector and I believe, ideally, down here, we can place down our energy exporter directly onto this battery. We can then place the logic cable here. Inside of here, we're going to say export energy, like so. And then on top, we're going to place down our connector, like that. And in theory, I feel like we should start to see the energy coming out of here and being sent down and around into this guy over here. Although, it doesn't seem to be working. What we might want to do... I've put down an energy importer here, but if I swap that to an energy interface, does that work? That also does not work. Interesting. I might need, potentially, oh, actually, hold on. I might be a, a fool here. Let me swap that back to an energy importer. Because battery is from integrated dynamics, I think we might just be able to get rid of this energy exporter and just put the cable right down to connect it up. I was hopeful that that would import in, and it might do as soon as we do this does that import into here it does not okay so this isn't working but i think what might work if i get another battery here i'm thinking can we put that battery on the reactor and does that get power i think it should so if i put this here that fills up instantly right it takes the full million out of there puts it in there that's perfect I'm wondering if the, um, I think the system might need a little bit of power in and of itself. So we're going to put an importer here. We're going to put a cable here and I'm going to put the omnidirectional connector on. I feel like this still shouldn't work. Like if I put uh, this variable card here, does that work? It doesn't. I think this is still getting power from the sun. My thought process is that if we get a few more cable, because right now the system doesn't have any power of its own, because there's no battery connected. I know it looks like there's a battery connected, but the battery is by the exporter. So I'm wondering if we put the cable down like this, if that then gives it the power to start pulling the power out and sending it over here. And I think it is doing that. I think the power is being pulled from there because you'll notice there's no, well, the power is being pulled out of there and it's out of here. So I think this is now working. I think putting the cable down like this onto the battery, and we could have probably done the same down here, by the way, if we wanted to, we could have probably just put a cable down on the other side of this potentially. But I think that the like logic, the, the omnidirectional connectors and the importers and stuff, I think might have needed a little bit of power to get things going. And that's why this connection here is important. But then this importer here is now able to pull the power around into Aww. here. And so hopefully now, let me give it a test, I guess. Well, actually, I was gonna say we could get rid of the solar panel, but we know it's moving because this is now empty. The problem now is getting Gallorium into that setup, right? So if we want to be able, uh, yeah, it's also quite possible it just needed a, a middle ground to put the power into. So like it's pulling it out of here, putting it back in here and then pulling it from there and putting it over here. I'm, I'm not too sure. Either way, I know that it works. I know in the future we should just be able to add this little setup here to any other device in our base and we should be able to move wireless power without having to run cables everywhere, which I think is worthwhile. So the Elorium, as we saw last episode, we can make utilizing the Elorium dust. I do think it's probably going to be worthwhile us investing in a Yolorium chicken. If we wanted to get a Yolorium chicken, we need 250 Yolorium, which means we would need 32 lots of this craft here. So we need 32 grains of Paisality. Diamonds, we've got more than 32 diamonds. That's easy enough. And then we would just need to get enough pulsating iron nuggets here, which again is kind of like just 32 of these, right? That seems completely doable. If we take 32 iron, and 32 ender pearls. We can, that's eight, uh, that's 16. I don't know why I got eight the first time. There's 16. Let's get these processing over in the alloy smelter. Again, I'm going to swap out the capacitors here. Boom and boom. Uh, let's do this and this. And let's also, just for the fun of it, do maybe this as well. We should definitely look at getting these guys connected up as well to the main power. Again, right now, it wouldn't really help too much because there's no power being generated. But um, I think basically what we're going to do here, we're going to go ahead and make 250 Elorium, feed that Elorium to a chicken, and then stick that chicken down on a new nest so that we can start generating Elorium. And then we can just put down an exporter onto our reactor insert port, this one right here. I think what I'll probably do is move this reactor insert port 
And then just for aesthetics, I'll probably move the output port as well. We do have 20 cyanide in there, which is good. I think we will get that when we break it. We do. I think I'm going to move the input port to the bank like this, simply due to the fact that we already have refined storage cable under here. So we can just run it up and put an exporter down for the Elorium. And then I'm going to put the importer down right about here. And again, that's just for symmetry, because that means at the front, we can do this and this that reforms the reactor and now we have one port on each side and i think it just looks a little bit nicer so let's go ahead and take our pulsating ingots turn them into pulsating nuggets craft those pulsating nuggets with diamonds boom and boom that gets us 36 which is more than enough and then we just need to run those through the sag mill over here let's throw you in like that let's go ahead and take this guy back out put him back in over here to speed everything up and I did try uh, pulverizing some wheat here in the sag mill between episodes. It does work. It's just not particularly uh, effective. It's like a 10% chance without grinding balls. So probably not really worth investing in. And then we can just take all of these grains of pisality, run them through the compressor. And at that point, we should have all of the eulorium that we need to pump up a eulorium chicken. And boom, there we go. Nice. All right. There is our radioactive eulorium chicken. Over here, we've got a lovely stasis chamber for the guy, and we've got our storage drawer beneath that, of course, which we're going to lock just like the rest of them. And we'll also go ahead and just throw the Elorium. And uh, what I assume are going to be the... Can I rotate with this wrench? I can't rotate with this wrench. I have to rotate with the other wrench. That's this one here from Pneumatocraft. That is going to allow me to rotate just so I can steal a feather here. And, uh, and actually, I can't steal feathers because all of the feathers are imported into the system. We've got 500 of them. Beautiful. Let's take that. Let's throw it in over here. And then we can go ahead and rotate these both back to face away. And we now should have unlimited Eulorium. I do want to make sure, of course, that the Eulorium that we do have goes into a compacting drawer. So let's find a spare drawer, let's say here, and then we can take all this out. Fantastic. That's just going to hold all the Eulorium for us. And then, of course, all we need to do now is get another exporter so that we can export the Eulorium into our reactor. And then on top of that, I think we also want to get an importer as well so that we can place the importer down on this side of the reactor to import all of the cyanite. So this one is currently not set to output, but we will change it to output. And then we can just import the cyanite and we'll put the cyanite, of course, into its own drawer as well. And a quick few processes later, I think we're good to go here. Let's make a destruction core. Let's also go ahead and make a construction core. Let's get an exporter and let's get an importer. Beautiful. Uh, do we have any spare cable in here? I think we should do. We do indeed. And then what we'll do is I'm going to quickly craft up two more covers. And uh, I do want to make them marble covers here if we can, which we definitely can. Fantastic. Because what we're going to do is we're going to cut into the floor down here like that we're going to place down we're going to try and fly out <laughs> with our jet boots we'll then place down a cable here we're going to cover this cable with like a ring hole like this to make sure that we can then do something like this and then we'll place down our exporter right about here and we'll tell it to export eulorium nice that should begin to export eulorium once there is some in the system right now there's zero percent core fuel if i put this eulorium in you know simulating the, what the chicken's going to be doing that should hopefully see eulorium come in there it does we can then turn this on it's going to start producing power that's all going to be good and it's going to produce more power as the eulorium fills up and then over on this side we'll do the exact same thing uh, there's the cable again let's do this let's do the cover again you do want the one with the hole in otherwise you can't pass it through we'll go boom and boom cool and so with that we should have basically fully automated our reactor here, and we should basically also have fully automated the battery. One thing I think we can do, just as kind of a safety Aww. procedure, is we could look at getting a bigger battery. I've been told that the way this works, let me make just a bunch of these, is that we can craft batteries together to make bigger batteries. So you'll see that was two 1 million RF batteries and is now a 2 million RF battery. And given that we have 2,000 redstone, and given that we have... 2000 crystallized mineral chunks i think we can probably make a decently sized battery and give us a good buffer of power that again is going to be useful especially when we start using uh, 5000 redstone flux per tick on our quantum compressor so let's do this and make just tons of crystallized mineral blocks and then let's also go ahead and get just a bunch of batteries here i assume it doesn't have to be the same kind of battery and these do stack that's actually very good can I craft, for example, 
This two million one with another one million battery? I can. Can I craft two of those? I can. Okay, so can I do this and just get like a big old battery? I totally can. Beautiful. So we can just kind of keep making these regular batteries. There's 20 of them. And then if we go boom, and does this work? I assume that it only uses, yeah, one set, but that's completely fine. All right, cool. So we've got 32 million worth of, uh, of buffer storage. And I'm also fairly certain. Can I do this and this to get to 33, but with 1 million in? I can. Nice. On top of that, over here, we've also, of course, got the extra million in there. And so we now have effectively about 35 million redstone flux worth of storage once you factor in uh, the battery down there as well. Cool. I think that should be more than enough. So now that that is taken care of, let's pivot over and see if we can't fight and kill this wither. As I mentioned, my plan here is going to be to use the minigun from Pneumaticraft, which in and of itself is not too difficult to make. It's not this one though, it's this one here. It is just a cannon barrel, a compressed iron, an air canister, a chest, a copper, and a lever. For that, we are missing just a cannon barrel and an air canister, both of which we have the resources to make. And just like that, we have a minigun. Nice, looks pretty intimidating. By itself though, not particularly good. We do need to get ammo for it. And I think there is the default ammo here, which I believe we have to make before we can upgrade to other tiers of ammo. This is just gunpowder, compressed iron, and copper. How much gunpowder do we have? We've got 13, I think that's fine because one gunpowder gets you a thousand ammo, which is pretty good. I'm gonna make four of these because if, uh, if we shift right click on the minigun, it can hold four lots of ammo. I'm then gonna upgrade this ammo to, I think, armor piercing ammo. There's a few different kinds. There's armor piercing, there's explosive, there's freezing, there's incendiary, and there's weighted. So I think armor piercing is gonna be the one we go for here. It says it can penetrate armor, and it does slightly more damage overall than normal ammo, but it's not cheap. It's not cheap, requires diamonds and compressed iron, but we do have almost 500 diamonds, and so we can afford to spend, you know, eight of them on getting four lots of armor piercing ammo. There is also weighted ammo that does a lot more damage than usual, but it has a very short range, and I don't really wanna get that close to the wither. So I am gonna go ahead and make one, two, three, four lots of armor piercing ammo. We can then load those in like so. Uh, real quick, just to show you how it works. Let me make one more regular ammo that I'm not gonna use for fighting the wither. And if we place that into here, the way this works is you hold down the right mouse button, it's gonna charge up, once you put pressure in it, of course, Isaac, <laughs> we need to charge it over here. Um, there we go, once it is fully charged, we can then hold down right click. Let me go find a uh, an unwitting victim that's not one of my drones. It feels a bit cruel to kill a, a helpless chicken that's just kind of hanging around doing his thing. But at the same time, I don't see any hostile mobs around here. Oh no, I do, I see a creeper. You know what, let's go find that creeper. Is he underground or is he above ground? He might be underground. There we go. Hello, my friend. You'll see that by default, not particularly powerful, but that's the uh, the general gist of it, is that we, uh, we charge it up and we shoot. Now, we can make this more powerful with a couple of different upgrades that we're gonna use. Obviously, we're already making it more powerful by utilizing the armor-piercing ammo instead of just the uh, regular ammo here, but we can take it yet further. If we put it back in the charger and we click the little upgrade option, there are a bunch of upgrades here. The ones that we want, I believe are the range upgrade. This increases the minigun's range. Each upgrade adds five meters. Basically, uh, it loses damage over range. By adding the range upgrades, we're gonna increase that damage over range, which means we can be further away from the mob and deal more damage. The dispenser upgrade increases the chance of ammo effects. So you can craft the ammo with potions to give them effects. Uh, this can significantly increase the air usage. So we, I don't think we need that one necessarily. Volume upgrades, I think are gonna be useful. These are gonna allow the, uh, the, the minigun to last for longer because right now it's not gonna last too, too long on uh, its initial 10 bars. The speed upgrade is crucial, I think, because it's going to allow us to charge up faster. Right now it takes a little bit of time between when you hold down the right mouse button and when it actually starts shooting. If we put just three speed upgrades in here, which is the max, that's gonna decrease that time between pressing down the mouse button and it actually shooting, which I think is huge. The security upgrade prevents the minigun from damaging tamed entities, I don't think is necessary. The entity tracker upgrade I think is actually quite useful. Um, although, I don't know how expensive this is. It's a little expensive in that it requires fermented spider eyes, and I don't know of a way for us to get mushrooms outside of a trader. So I think we might have to forego it. It basically does this with the zoom that we already have in the pack, so probably not necessary. And so yeah, let me get the range and volume upgrades on this. 
Uh, the range upgrades I don't think are too expensive. I'm pretty sure we've made these before for our drones. It's just arrows and bows. I think it said six was the max there. So ideally, I do want to get one, two, uh, six bows. Obviously, as per usual, we're out of sticks here. That's fine. Let's get a few more stacks. We are making the wood automatically now, so I'm a little less worried about it. Three, four, five, and six. And then if we're going to make six of these, we need 24 arrows, which needs flint. Flint is fine. We can take gravel, and gravel we can get from cobble, and cobble we're, of course, making automatically. So uh, thankfully now, our mechanical squeezer is a fair bit faster. Well, it used to be a fair bit faster. These days, not so much, I guess. Uh, let me time in a bottle this. That does get us some flint, and actually that gets us more than enough flint. I was going to put the gravel in afterwards to get even more flint, but... We don't actually need that much flint to get uh, 24 arrows. So back over here, let's do this. Let's do 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. Perfect. All right. That should be everything. It is. So there's the range add-ons. And then other than that, I just wanted volume upgrades as well. These are also not too bad. Uh, how much compressed iron that we have, though, is uh, going to be a question for us. Yeah, we don't have that much compressed iron, but... As per usual, we should be able to get quite a bit more by just dumping iron into here. And in fact, it's probably worth doing at least a few more stacks here. And uh, thankfully, you'll notice that we are fully locked on our power here, like we're fully backed up on power, despite the fact that it is uh, nighttime now, which is very good to see. And once we've got all of those, we should be able to very easily craft up uh, a couple of these air canisters. You can put a lot of volume upgrades into the minigun. I don't know if we're going to need that many of them. So we can put in the range upgrades, we can put in the volume upgrades. That's going to allow to store a lot more. The maximum number of volume upgrades you can put in here is 25. That's a lot. I think I will make a few more here to give us just that bit more pressure. We can do a bit of a test, of course, to see how, uh, how long it's going to last. Let's do 10. We'll put five more in. So we'll go for almost half of the total number of, uh, of volume upgrades in the minigun. On top of this, I do want to upgrade our armor as well. Currently, we don't have any of the armor upgrades, but I do want to put those in. I think you can put four armor upgrades into each armor piece. Let me go and check that real quick. We'll take four. We'll, of course, take our minigun out of here. It is charging up, and we do want to make sure that's fully charged before we begin fighting. But for now, let's do this and, yes, four armor upgrades. I think the same is true for all the other pieces as well. It is. So let me go ahead and get 12 more armor upgrades just to maximize the amount of armor that we have. And I think we'll also try getting a couple of, um, of golden apples as well to keep our health up, just in case we do get hit by the weather. Having a little bit of uh, regeneration, I think, would be uh, incredibly useful for us. So we'll do this, we'll do this, and we will do this. One other thing I did see, I do want the night vision, I think, that you can get with the, um, the helmet here. I noticed it down here. How expensive is the night vision upgrade? I could also do with speed upgrades just to make this go a little faster when we put armor pieces on. The night vision upgrade is this one here. It requires three potions of night vision, as well as uh, lapis and pressure chamber glass. The potions of night vision are... Oh, I see. We need potions of night vision, like, two. Um, oh, no, wait. Yes, okay, we need the eight-minute versions. Golden carrots, nether wart. These are not too bad. I don't think they're worth investing in just yet, though. We don't have any nether wart. I think we can get nether wart, but I don't think it's, um, it's a critical item that we need. I think, though, that this looks pretty good in terms of fighting the wither. I think we should be able to make something decent happen here. Let me get the, uh, the minigun charged up a bit more. Also, by the way, if you uh, run out of ammo, you can uh, shift right click because only the ammo in the top left slot actually counts. So I could put the rest in here and uh, you'll see we're still using the, um, the regular ammo. You can shift and scroll to cycle through. So that changes which ammo is, uh, is being selected. Basically, the one that's got the green box on it is the one that's currently being selected. And, uh, and yeah, so once we run out, we're going to shift and scroll to move on to the next one, fighting the wither. Uh, now we'll see it should charge up and start fighting a fair bit faster than it did previously, which is good. And so, yeah, let me uh, get a few... Let me put this on charge over in here. We are doing okay, slowly but surely, on the pressure. We can maybe do with more crude oil here, you know. We're kind of tearing through it to make all of the, the pressure for this, and you'll see we've kind of plateaued a little bit on how quickly we're filling this up. But while that does fill up a little bit, let me get a couple of golden apples so that we can uh, hopefully regen a little bit whilst we're fighting. Thankfully, gold we have and apples we have. 
We don't have that many apples. I'll make 10 of these. I, I'm hoping that's an excessive number of golden apples and that we don't need that many of them. But I would rather be safe than sorry here. And, uh, and yeah, this, for the most part, looks pretty good. And I think we should kind of be good to go. Food-wise, we've got bread in here. We should be fine on that. I will get some more bread. I don't think we're going to eat 13 bread during the fight. But you know what? Just to be safe, let me go ahead and just craft up another stack. There is the more efficient recipe for bread, but given that we have thousands of wheat at this point, I think doing this craft makes more sense. I uh, do want to make sure that I am fully thirsted up with no thirst at all. Some people are asking if you can kill the, the wither with the minigun. I believe you can. Uh, there's, normally you can't fight the whole wither with a minigun just because it uh, doesn't let you use ranged attack at the end. I don't believe that's the case. I believe we can fight it right to the end with the minigun here. And one thing I'd also do is I might also change the speed back to 100%. Because I think a lot of what we're going to be doing is kind of putting the wither down, running away from the wither, shooting it from a distance, and as it flies towards us, I kind of just want to run away again. I want to keep a good distance from the wither to make sure that we kind of try to avoid as many of the um, of the wither hits as possible so we don't get the withering effect and um, and then shoot from a distance and run again because I think we are going to be faster than the wither with this many speed upgrades, which is kind of the whole thing that I'm kind of counting on here. Okay, so we've got a almost full minigun here. Let me swap out the ammo that I don't want for the ammo that I do want. Down here, I don't think I'm going to run out of ammo, but just to play it safe, I'm going to make one more set of, of armor-piercing ammo like that. And we'll have that on us. We can always shift it in mid-fight if we need to. Let's get some soul sand. One, two, three, four. And let's get three wither skeleton skulls. One, two, three. Perfect. All right, I think we're pretty much good to go here. So I am going to head out into the desert. I'm going to go a little far away from the base here. We do want it to be mostly flat. And I'm going to try avoid, thankfully we have step assist, which is nice. I'm going to try avoid jumping because the flight is, is pretty slow, right? So I'm going to try avoid that where possible. And we're just going to kind of run like this to, to get away from the wither. So let me see here. I'm going to put the wither down, let's say over here. Like this, again, trying to avoid using the jump. And then I'm going to quickly drink. I'm also going to move my golden apples right next to my minigun. I'm going to put this down, and we're going to run <laughs> away from the wither, okay? And then, as soon as he comes online, like, as he gets close to coming online, we're going to shoot. Here we go. It does a decent amount of damage. And then when he gets close, we just run. <laughs> we run away. Ideally, not too close to our base, of course, but we run far enough away to where we can do the same thing again. If he gets distracted fighting somebody else, that's completely fine by me. He is pretty low, actually. This does a decent amount of damage. I'm very happy about that. And I'm out of ammo. Hold on, shift and scroll. And then run. <laughs> Don't want to get attacked. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. This is bad. That's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Keep avoiding him. I don't want to. If I don't have to eat any gold apples, that would be fantastic. We just want to not get the wither effect if possible. This should be it, chat. This should be it. Fantastic. All right, all right, all right. And there we go. Nice. Okay, cool. Good, good, good. We have done it. We've got one nether star. I think we could do that again if we needed to. But as we saw earlier, chat, we don't need to. We can go ahead and just duplicate this utilizing the pressure chamber. If we were to take three uh, wither... Actually, let's take all of the wither skeleton skulls we have. And let's go take as much soul sand as we can grab as well. Uh, speaking of which, it looks like we're fully out of soul sand, which is completely fine. Of course, we can take more sand. We can throw that into the hopper. I think for now, I'll go ahead and I will disable this so that we actually get to keep all of the soul sand and we're not uh, kind of just waiting on it. Also, let's do one of these so we can get that soul sand nice and quick and also maybe uh, one of these as well. That's not much soul sand. <laughs> I, wonder if I, uh, I wonder if using the time of the bottle kind of messes with the odds a little bit. Because it said 70%, but that looks like less than 70%. Anyway, over here now, if we put in one nether star with one, two, three, four soul sand and three wither skeleton skulls, that should just get us two nether stars. Look at that. Nice. Then we could do the same again here. We could put in two of these. We could put in eight soul sand and six wither skeleton skulls like that. That should get us even more nether stars. And again, thanks to our high pressure compressor over here. We have got all of the pressure that we need. Look at that. Fantastic. And uh, you know what? Let's do the same again. Let's put in two more of these. Let's put in another eight of these and another six 
of these. Fantastic. Because now the next quest here in the Dimensional Collections quest line is Netherite. But then we need to get the end trading stall, which needs two nether stars, and the nether trading stall, which also requires two nether stars. And so once we have at least four spare nether stars, we can then look. We're so close to 250 here on the scrap, which is really good. For now, though, I'm gonna have to take some of it to make some netherite, which I believe we can do with gold inside of our alloy smelter. Boom and boom. That's gonna get us netherite ingots. Fantastic, quest complete. And we only need two of these actually in order to get both stalls. So let me put the rest back in there because we're very close to the 250 needed to get the ancient chicken. And so stall wise, let's do the end trading stall, which just needs a magenta carpet, which I do believe is gonna mean that we need to buy some magenta. Uh, do we not have any relic scraps? We do, never mind. Let's do this, let's get magenta dye. And then as for the nether stall, we need cyan dye. That is also completely fine. We also do need some carpet which is gonna require some wool. I assume we don't have any wool, we don't, but we do have string. And of course we can do something like this, Aww. one and two, fantastic, boom. And from there, we can craft some magenta carpet, like so, Aww. and some cyan carpet, like so. And I think, chat, that that is everything for the end trading stall, just sandstone at the bottom there, and the nether trading stall, nice. And these work just like regular old uh, blocks for villagers that allow them to become different occupations. So I do believe that we are going to want to acquire another summoning block along with our old friend, the block of emerald here. And of course, just a regular emerald, or I guess in this case two, because we need to place down both of these. Ideally, I think somewhere permanent. Let's put one of them down. Let's put one of them down like here and let's put the other one down opposite over here, sure. And so now, if we were to go ahead and do something like this and this and this, I assume, look at that, he is gonna become a nether merchant, fantastic. And then, I don't know if the next guy is also gonna become a nether merchant if I leave him here. I don't think that's how that works, but just to play it safe, we'll uh, go ahead and move this over to the other side. We'll place it down closer to this guy. Let's go boom and boom and boom. He should become an ender merchant. He does indeed, look at that, fantastic outfit that, my friend, good stuff. And so now I do believe that we can uh, presumably purchase the end stone here, which is kind of our gateway to the next section of the quest book. It is indeed, look at that, boom, four end stone. Can I duplicate this? I can, I can craft it with stone in the alloy smelter to duplicate it. So we'd have to keep buying it from this guy. And now that unlocks, chat, the final section of the quest book. I don't want smooth stone. That's not what I want to do there. But uh, that looks the final section of the quest book. And the end stone is the gateway to that final section of the quest book because uh, we now need... Also, I noticed that Ben gave us more maps now. I think that quest has been changed just because uh, when we got it, we didn't actually get a, a working map. So I think now the uh, you get extra maps just in case your first one doesn't work, I think, is, um, is probably why that happens. Does this one work for us? It does. Look at that. It actually has an X on it this time. Nice. Thank you, Ben. But uh, let's put those away for now. We don't necessarily need them. But now... Down here, we can make end steel ingots. And the end steel is really the gateway for the next section of the quest book because a lot of the stuff in here does require end steel in order to work. We need to make the crafting table, the ultimate crafting table. We need to make the next tier of resource generator, which is actually the previous tier, but in this pack is the more expensive version for some reason. And I think one of the first things we want to work on getting is the neutron collector because this passively generates neutrons. I believe it passively generates these tiny piles of neutrons, and then it takes nine of these to craft a neutron nugget, and then it takes nine nuggets to craft an ingot, and we need quite a lot of these ingots. They're used in a bunch of different recipes for the end game here. And so we probably wanna get these set up sooner rather than later. You do get four at a time, but they're pretty slow. And so we're probably gonna have to craft quite a lot of these in order to push forward. And you'll notice this recipe is um, is a lot complex. And so I think what we're probably gonna start working on in the next episode here is auto crafting with refined storage. We'll look at upgrading our refined storage system, getting some auto crafting going so that we can start setting up crafts like this and doing them automatically so we don't have to do it all manually. We'll look at automating the creation of things like end steel so we can just have our system make them for us. We don't have to keep doing it manually. And we'll also probably look at getting more resources uh, via the chickens as well. Speaking of which, seeds are becoming a problem. You'll see that we're fully out of seeds here. I believe we're also fully out of seeds here. We've got five seeds left here and we are fully out of seeds here as well. I think our chickens do still have a couple of seeds each. You've got a stack, you've got a stack, 37, stack 46. They've got some, but we are running out. We're not producing more seeds than we're using, which is not ideal. So we could definitely do with looking 
at producing more seeds sooner rather than later. Uh, another thing we're definitely going to want to do. Do you play some, a sound then? <laughs> oh, there's the nether one, by the way. What do I want to get? I want to get night vision, right? Can I get some scrap? I can definitely get some scrap if I get my uh, Amadon tablet out. Let me do some trades for, I guess, LPG is um is the best one, I think. But then again, we don't really need gasoline, I don't think. So you know what? Let me sell like 32 gasoline. Just all of it. We're going to just dump our uh, stock of gasoline, place order. And that should get us a decent amount of, uh, of relic scraps, enough to buy the nether water at least. But um, the end steel here requires obsidian. And so I think one of the things we should do very soon here, in fact, we could probably do this now, is um, maybe move the fluid mixer a little bit and potentially look at uh, getting two more of the fluid generators to generate water and lava automatically and just pump those into the fluid mixer to generate unlimited obsidian. Because looking forward again, at things like the neutron collector, it requires a lot of end steel. And we also, for these diamond lattices here, require end steel bars, which are also then required in order to make these crystal matrix ingots, which you guessed it require more end steel. And then the neutron collector here requires a few of these crystal matrix ingots, which require those uh, lattices and end steel. And it also requires its own end steel. And so as you can see, there's a lot of, of end steel required in the completing of the end of this pack. So let's take the nether wart here and Let's see if we can't, I guess we can't get a brewing stand, right? Because we don't have any blaze rods, which is not ideal. We can get blaze rods from a blaze chicken. I don't know, actually, we might have a blaze chicken because I know those do spawn naturally in the world, right? I think they spawn over in the Badlands biome. And so what we might be able to do, we might be able to do two things here. Yeah, they do spawn in the Badlands. If we head over to the Badlands, we can probably just kill a blaze chicken, potentially with this device right here, to try and get a single blaze rod. Let's give it a try. Also, I do forget that there are just blazes here that just drop blaze rods. Nice, all right, well, that's all we need. Let's head home. I did move the uh, the home point on my waystone. It used to uh, take us back into the water. Uh, once it's off cooldown, you can just hold it in your off hand again and shift right click, and that will change it to uh, the new location if you want to swap the home point on your homestone. We need a blaze rod for the brewing stand. Easy. Let's go ahead and place that down. We then need some bottles, I believe, and some water, which we can get, of course, from here. If we throw those in, we need awkward potions, right? Night vision. If I want to get the night vision upgrade, I need three potions of night vision, which means I need three potions of night vision, which means I need three awkward potions. That is fine. Let's do three of you with the nether ward and of course we do need blaze powder right in order for this to actually work oh that's my bad i think i might have to go and back to the badlands hold on chad does also remind me here that if we want to get the better flight we need gas tiers and blaze rods right so we have the uh, the jet boots currently we're on tier two i believe if we want tier three we need four gas tiers and two blaze rods so we could look at that after that it's um another star and two phantom membrane i believe we can spawn phantoms using the summoning block with leather and so we could try fight them there. I don't know what the odds are on getting Phantom Member, and I feel like it's a little low. But uh, real quick, let me see if I can get at least one more Blaze Rod, but maybe also a few more Gas Tears whilst I'm out here. All right, so after killing a couple of Ghasts and Blazes over in the Badlands biome, we now have five Gas Tears and six Blaze Rods. I do believe that, yeah, look at that. We can get five Blaze Powder per Blaze Rod over in the Mechanical Squeezer. And so if we uh, take that blaze powder and throw it, of course, over into here, that is going to slowly but surely, with the help of our time in a bottle, produce for us the awkward potions. We, of course, then want to uh, take those awkward potions and get a golden carrot. I did not <laughs> utilize my ability to grow a carrot before. Can I purchase a carrot through the Amazon tablet? I can. Uh, Scott Eric is still selling these, fantastic. And so let me go ahead and buy like three of these. Sure, place order, fine. That gives us more carrots for the future if we wanna grow more for ourselves and not have to rely on buying them. But to be fair, buying them is not too difficult. The scraps are uh, pretty easy to come by, but we are kind of relying on the uh, the trade store being there in the future, which is not always going to be the case. All right, once we have the carrot, we can then hopefully upgrade that fairly easily to golden carrot status. Probably easier if we uh, don't scroll through to find the recipe. 
Let me uh, dump those out. Let's do it the old fashioned way then. Let's do this. Boom, we'll take you. Throw that in over here. Boom, once again, give it a quick tap. Make it nice and fast. And then once that's done, then we just need to do redstone, which is completely fine. We've got redstone, boom, and boom. And that should be everything that we need for our night vision. That gets us three eight minute long night vision potions. Back in here, we can do something like this. Kaboom. While we're at it, I think we can upgrade to the next tier of jet boot upgrades. Of course, to do that, we have to come over here. Uh, let's first of all throw our night vision upgrade into the helmet. Fantastic. Then on top of that, let's go ahead and take the jet boot upgrade out of our jet boots. And let's see if we can't upgrade. We need two more vortex cannons, which needs two more air canisters and also requires two more yellow dye, which we do not have the ability to buy. We can buy one yellow dye from the, uh, from the store here, but I think we are going to have to get a, a second yellow dye for the second Vortex Cannon. That's fine. We have more to sell. Let's sell some diesel in this scenario. Diesel is the what You know, let's sell the uh, the kerosene because uh, the kerosene is uh, is less useful. We can really only use it for um, for fuel at this point, so we'll just kind of burn that away. We are using the diesel uh, and the uh, LPG over here for lubricant and plastic, of course, for speed upgrades and whatnot. So uh, hopefully the diesel is our least used. And after that, if we want to get the tier five boots, we just need to get a bunch of phantom membrane, two for the recipe and some more for the uh, potion of slow falling, which I think should be doable, especially with the minigun here. So let me do this and this. Thought they weren't selling yellow dye for a second there. That should allow us to make another one of these vortex cannons and it should allow us to upgrade to the tier three jet boots. Now, as I saw earlier, we can spawn phantoms using leather and sandstone so sandstone we have we'll take that and leather we also do not have <laughs> uh, we can get more leather with the rotten flesh here and of course we can go and kill more leather chickens should we wish let's do that and we'll be patient we don't, we don't need to use the time in a bottle here fantastic we'll take this and so the summoning block we still have on us let's put down the sandstone the summoning block and then if we right click it with leather we should just be able to shoot this guy Oh, I'm out of ammo. Let me shift scroll. There we go. I think... I don't know what the odds are on getting... Um, we're pretty low on this, eh? We got another thing, though, so we can re redo that. I don't know what the odds are on getting... A phantom membrane. And we need quite a few of them. Well, there's one. <laughs> can I duplicate this? I can't duplicate this. I think I need three, though. I need one to make the potion of slow falling, which is what we need here. Yeah, and I need two more to get the uh, the upgrade itself, so I do only need three. And so I guess we're going to go out to find some leather chickens, and I keep picking up melon slices, I guess, from that uh, melon that keeps growing and then getting harvested but not collected. Let's go find some more leather chickens to try and get some more leather, and let's see if we can't spawn a few more phantoms and hopefully get... A, uh, a few more phantom membrane. It shouldn't take too long. We got very lucky, and it only took two more phantoms to get two more membrane. I am very happy with that. So now, back over here, we need a few things. I'm after the jet boot tier four upgrade. Tier five, we need an elytra. I don't know if we can even get the elytra. I think we can. I might be able to trade from the villager for it. And then we'd also need some more uh, Chorus Root, which is easy enough. End Rods are not too bad, actually. Dragon's Breath is a tricky one, though. Um, the, unless the Dragon Head is also purchasable, maybe, because I don't think we can go to the end. So I'm not actually quite sure how possible any of that is. But let us go ahead and craft up some more empty bottles. That would be much easier to do if we had a little bit of glass. And so let's quickly do one of these. That should get us three glass at once, because the Alloy Smelter does smelt three items at a time. Very good. Back down here, we can go one, two, three. Boom. And round here, hopefully, we can go one, two, three, drop all those in. This time around, we are once again after the nether wart, which we have on us, Isaac. Let's do this. That's going to get us the awkward potion. The awkward potion, we're then going to upgrade to a potion of slow falling and then to a redstone potion. Okay, good. Again, time in the bottle makes this so much faster. So let's take all of that. We'll grab the redstone whilst we wait. And then in here, let's put in the membrane to hopefully capitalize on the fact that we are still accelerated. And as soon as that is done, we can also throw in the redstone. Again, still capitalizing on that 8x speed boost. You know what, let's make it 16x. 
just to make it faster. Fantastic. Uh, I don't believe we needed three of these, but I guess we have three now. Uh, what we don't have is uh, yet again, two more yellow die, one and two. But I believe, chat, that that is everything we need for two more Vortex Cannons, just as soon as we craft two more air canisters. One and two. And that should be everything for the tier four jet boots, which I'm hopeful are going to be a little bit better than the previous tier of jet boots. So let's do this. Let's do this. I don't think the speed upgrades on here increase the speed of the flying or anything like that. So I think we just put it on. And as soon as we're charged up here, we should be able to give this a go. Someone makes a good point in the Twitch chat, actually. We can trade 64 relic scraps for one Elytra in the Amadron tablet. And this is just a normal Amadron recipe. This is not somebody selling. You'll see the name at the top when they're uh, on the server selling. This is just somebody, this is just the Amadron tablet selling it. So, oh, I guess in that case, let's quickly do this. Let's move away from this guy. And by move away, I mean for, let's uh, do one of those. And then let's go ahead and probably just sell like all of our LPG here. Cause it's one, uh, relic scrap per, and we've got 64 buckets worth. So if we sell 64 uh, relic scraps worth of LPG, I guess 63 is what we can muster here. Place order. That is going to get us over a stack, and then we can just buy the Elytra. And at that point, chat, I think we're, we're, we're maybe there. At the Dragon's Breath, though, we can buy the Elytra, but we can't get the Dragon's Head. I don't know if there's a way to get the Dragon's Head. I don't know if it's a trade that we can unlock from, from the end trader man, wherever he's gone. This guy over here. Maybe if we trade enough stuff to this guy, we can get him up to a level to where we could potentially purchase that. But that is not time limited. What is time limited is our ability to purchase this Elytra. So let's do this. I would like one of these, please. Place order. Perfect. That's going to get put in the chest. Over here, we just need more relic scrap if we're going to trade with this guy. Because right now we don't have that much. We've got 12 and we need at least 16 to start trading with him. All right, but we'll hold on to the uh, Elytra for now, and uh, we can keep an eye out for the Dragon Head in the future. For now, though, that is much quicker. It's much faster to get off the ground, which is very nice. And I think the hover is not enabled. Hold on, let me go U, and then Jet Boots, and then enable hover. And then I think, ooh, enable Flight Stabilizers. Brings the player to an instant stop when the Thrust Key is released. And then we've got Builder Mode. Enables more creative-like flight. Thrust Key climbs vertically. Hold on. Oh, that's so much nicer. And look at the hover here. So we don't move around as fast with that build mode enabled. But it's actually just like a much easier. So it's definitely slower when you have the build mode enabled. But in terms of like getting up to like here and then getting down and using the thing. Also, I'm going to turn my uh, speed back down again now that we're not uh, fighting the wither. But I think it's definitely more usable than before. We turn off build mode though. As soon as I... What does it say? It says, as soon as the thrusters stop, brings the player to an instant stop when the thrust key is not held. So we go forward, and then as soon as we let go, we do instantly stop. So there's no more kind of um, momentum carried forward like there was previously, where you would kind of keep going for a bit. You just instantly stop, which is actually, again, quite nice. It means that when I want to stop above a, a thing, I can actually stop above that thing, which is nice. Cool. All right. For now, we'll go ahead and turn off the hover. I might keep the build mode on, though, because the build mode's quite useful. I think that makes it like actually a little bit easier for us to use in day-to-day -day activities, unlike the um, kind of more laid down gliding approach, which I think is gonna be useful for traveling long distances, but again, just not so useful for uh, for building around the base. Anyway, chat, I think that is gonna about do it for this episode of Desertopolis. Next time we'll come back, and like I said, I think we will look at beginning on the end of what quest line, you know, we can kind of collapse all of these quest lines now. Uh, we'll look at starting the final quest line here. We'll look at getting some end steel. We'll ultimate the obsidian. And I think most importantly, we'll look at getting some crafters and some automation set up with refined storage. This right here, 3,170 redstone flux per tick is very nice indeed. Almost at the 5,000 redstone flux per tick required in order to, uh, to actually power the quantum compressor. And yeah, we'll look, I think, at definitely getting towards the neutron collectors so we can start getting those sooner rather than later. And we'll also probably take a look at um, a better way of producing seeds as well at least a faster way of producing seeds because right now we're just not producing them fast enough to keep up with these seed hungry chickens but those are our problems for future isaac for now i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode of desert opolis there 